So there's three things that we're going to focus on. The first thing we're going to focus on is that these people always, always have some form of a holistic view. Now, they're not always going to perfectly execute on all of these things, but they at least are aware of them, and they pay some attention to them. So the first thing we're looking at here is organization. So in other words, as we discussed, right, there, what goes when you're out of the, the structure, the confines of an office environment, it is that structure that is imposed upon you. That structure could be nine till five, like a daily structure. It could be a structure of this meeting followed by this meeting. It could be a structure of a networking event that you go that you go to that is in the office, right? So much of that structure disappears. And interestingly, there's even a structure associated with the right going to and from the office, for example. So what does a commute do? Well, a commute, as much as many of us hate it, we just think about it as a block of time, one of the purposes of a commute, in terms of our brain, is it preps us for the idea of going to work in the office. So by the time we arrive at the office, we actually can get started and get going effectively. When we return home, it creates separation from the work environment to the home environment, so that by the time we arrive at home, we're ready to take up the, 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 home, you know, the home tasks of work. Right? So you may have noticed this, if you worked from, work from the office and you moved to working from home or something along those situations, you might have found it's actually you'll walk out of your home office next door and instantly you go from being, I don't know, in my case, like a co-founder of Billion Minds to a dad, right? And there's no separation between those things. My brain hasn't had time to switch up from one and focus on the other. I don't do that effectively well. So, in the traditional structure, in the traditional structure, there are a bunch of things that kind of help you organize and compartmentalize your life and that is gone, and so you need to create that for your own thing by figuring out how you organize your stuff. Now, closely related to that is the routine, right? What is your routine in the morning? What is your routine in the evening? And what is your routine as you switch from one mode of work to another mode of work? So they've been very thoughtful about that. They've figured out what that routine needs to be. It's not been imposed upon them because they've got to catch, you know, I'm from the UK, so we get everywhere by train, right? I don't have to catch my 8.30 train anymore, right? Now I need to impose a routine on me in order to be able to, to be effective. And then the last thing, the thing that um, is really, really ignored by a lot of people, but these people recognize is equally important, is what is their approach to well-being. Now that's, Again, not going to be the same for all of us, right? For some people, it's going to be a yoga class. For other people, it's going to be early morning walks. For other people, it's going to be uh, you know, heavily focused on nutrition or weightlifting or whatever it happens to be. But they've got something figured out that is a repeatable uh, approach associated to their overall well-being. So they've taken these things together. They've created a holistic view, and they've done it all within the aim, uh, all within the means of being able to be sustainably effective over time. And each one of these is personal. Why? Because it reflects their uniqueness as a human being. Right. So this first piece, absolutely critically important. I bet there are people in the room right now who are like, I got this one nailed. And I don't really have this one nailed, and I certainly don't have this one nailed, or whatever would happen to me. So take a moment and think about what your approach is to all of these different areas and where you're neglecting each of these different areas. Now, by the way, when we work with people, we go into a lot more detail on each of these. So, for example, there's eight different dimensions of well-being that you really should be thinking about if you're truly thinking about uh, the well-being piece of this, for example. When you're establishing a routine, it's actually a combination of a lot of micro-routines that you need to build together in order to be able to do this really, really 